Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 Shutter exclusive, The Pale Door, that is coming to Shutter on Thursday, December 17th. And because it's not on Shutter yet when I'm dropping this review, and because it's a new film going to Shutter, no spoilers for this review. I will give a little small little synopsis, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more. So, uh, first of all, directed by Aaron B. B. Kuntz, who did uh, Camera Obscura as well as Scare Package, which, by the way, I really like Scare Package. It is available on Shutter at the moment. If you have not seen it, you should definitely see it because it is a quite a good horror comedy, in my opinion. I liked it so much that I actually did a pre-order of the Blu-ray, so it's back there in my Blu-ray slash DVD collection somewhere. So good stuff. Uh, written by Kuntz, Cameron Burns, and Keith Lansdale. Yes, Keith Lansdale, the son of Joe R. Lansdale, the author, who's done some really great stories. Uh, one of uh, one of my favorite uh, performances of Bruce Campbell, Joe R. Lansdale's, the adaptation of Joe R. Lansdale's book for Bubba Hotep. Love that, love that. Uh, anyway, uh, Lansdale's written scripts for Christmas with the Dead, and he did the short The Companion for Creepshow series, which I quite like that one. That one was really good. Kuntz called the this film a mix of 310 to Yuma and The Descent, but with psychological horror thrown into it. I think he actually said, like, doused in psychological horror or something like that, and then, like, lit a blaze or something. It was something very, you know, over the top, but... Okay, so quick synopsis, because I don't want to give a lot away if you want to check this out. So, um, basically, Western, it, it's a horror Western uh, mix, which I do have to give a lot of credit for attempting something like this, because I really do like horror and Western mixes. Actually, one book I read kind of recent-ish that I really loved by Josh Mallerman called Unbury Carol is a horror Western mix. It's really good. Read that book. Um, so I have to give him credit on that. So it's a horror Western where it's kind of a gang of gunslingers, basically, who aren't so great. They're kind of on the lam to a degree, and things aren't going well. And they run into this little town, and there's something going on with the town that is not of this world, really. It's, it, it's a supernatural, not normal type thing. Uh, good concept, I will say. Unfortunately, I cannot recommend this film. Uh, I did not enjoy it. And I'll give you all the reasons why I didn't enjoy it. Now, another thing is, I feel bad saying this, but I'm always honest with my reviews. And I'm, I say I feel bad saying that I didn't like the film and I'm going to say a lot of things I don't like about it because I do think there's a possibility that Aaron B. Kuhn, B. Kuntz will see this review. And in the case that he does, I love the scare package. Like I said, I pre-ordered the Blu-ray and I have watched it twice since it came out and I'll continue to watch it. But anyway, I'm not going to lie about reviews like some people I know do. So anyway, I'll lay it out here. There are a few good things that I did enjoy about the film, but overall, I did not enjoy this film. I thought there were a lot of problems. I thought it was kind of underdeveloped, the story itself. Like I said, big points for attempting this, but there's a lot of stuff lacking, and I think a lot of those things lacking come down to the script. I think the story needed to be developed a lot more. The characters needed to be developed a lot, lot more, and... For the most part, the acting's not the best, and this is one of those scripts, and it's you know kind of slow to a point at times, where you need the actors to really sell those characters. And for the most part, that does not happen, unfortunately. So, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit more. Uh, it starts with an Edgar Allan Poe quote, which I thought was an awesome start, because I love some Edgar Allan Poe. I don't live all too far from Baltimore, so... I'm a Poe fan, down with it. Uh, we've moved past opening credits, though, I do need to say. I know some some newer films every now and then will still do these opening credits, but as a industry, film has kind of moved away from that for the most part, and I think that's a good thing. I really don't think we should be doing credits in the beginnings of films anymore because it makes people impatient. They don't really like that. Um, it's a minor gripe, in my opinion. You know, just do the credits at the end. So, yeah. 
Uh, I do like the opening music, though. The opening music was very good. Uh, I wrote down that I believed it was simplistic and modern, modernly dark, but with a Western kind of tinge to it. And in general, this is one of the most amazing things about the film. There's something outstanding about this film, and that is Alex Cuervo's score for this film is awesome. He did such a good job, so much so that I feel like I might want to own the soundtrack for this, and I barely ever say that. The music is great. Like I said, it's this it's this interesting mix that I've not really heard before of like this kind of modern dark sound with you know Western mixed into it, and it's really 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 well done. And some of the moments in the film where I was kind of feeling a little bit of something and really engaging a lot uh, was mainly because of the music driving that. The music is excellent. So Alex Cuervo, big shout out to you. Excellent job with that. So um, it jumps into action pretty fast with this film. I do like that. That is great. It's always good to do that. Kind of grab the audience quick. The problem is it kind of lets go a little bit after that. Uh, and then it gets to uh, another thing that is a little bit attention grabbing, but then it gets back to kind of dragging its feet a bunch and going very slow. Things start to feel very repetitive, especially a lot of the dialogue. A lot of the character interactions are kind of the same throughout the entire film, and the same stuff just gets talked at, talked about ad nauseum. And it's sometimes it's the same characters, sometimes it's different characters, but talking about the same thing that other characters talked about. And there's really nothing new added to it. So there's a lot of wasted time in this film, in my opinion, and it really should have been cut down. It's like um, with all the credits and everything, it's like an hour and 36 runtime. Um, it definitely needed to be cut down a bunch because it really does drag. There are parts of it that don't drag that I found particularly interesting, and I'll talk a little bit more about that without spoilers, but yeah, so. The acting is rough, as I said, it's kind of rough, um, but it does improve a little bit as the film progresses, I did notice that, so that is good, but still, it's just overall lacking, and like I said, a script like this, you really, really needed the actors to be able to sell those characters, to pull people in, to suck them in. The other problem, like I was saying, is that you don't really understand the characters all that much or have a whole lot of backstory or they don't really develop a whole lot. There's one character in particular who's like the main character who, you know, like you see his journey, you see his backstory and everything, but everyone else just kind of seems to be there. And it just, it doesn't create a whole lot of interest. Um, one, another minor thing that, that came up is for films like this, you want to kind of try and go for realism with it, if you're going to set it in a, in a setting like Western. The people were abnormally clean for a, being in a Western in every single scene unless they had you know gotten bloody, uh, which is very unrealistic for this. Um, and that's not something that you needed to spend a lot of money on. Literally, you could just have people roll around in the dirt after they put their costumes on. Which, by the way, the costuming was pretty well done, in my opinion. People looked the part. They definitely did. And I appreciate that about it. But, once again, they were all very clean. It looked like they were showering daily. Or maybe even two times a day. That is how clean they looked. And for, like I said, for a film like this, a lot of those kind of small details, it matters. So, they needed to be dirty. I know it's kind of a dumb small thing. The other thing is... A lot of the, the there was no consistency of accents with anyone. It was kind of like it seemed like it was like a do an accent if you feel like it, don't do one if you don't feel like it, and pick your own accent. And that that's another one of those kind of like attention to detail things where you're kind of breaking people out of the um, illusion of it being in that time period and being a Western in that area just like you are with, you know, people just being abnormally clean for that time. So another one of those small things that kind of irked me about it. The camera work in this is very unstable. Uh, a lot, a lot of movement going on, not intentional. It's, you know, kind of shaky, not intentional. Um, it does get more stable as the film goes on, and I really did appreciate that. And I felt like as the film went on, the camera work in general seemed to get like I said, more stable, but also 
there were more inspired shots that started to pop up. It's kind of like the cameraman was a little bit nervous, not really sure of themselves early on. And then as the film goes on, they started to kind of settle into things and kind of started to come up with some cool visual ideas. So towards the, you know, later middle and the end of the film, there are some really cool camera movements that come in, some camera shots that come in. The other thing, especially early on, that they do do a better job of getting away from later is very close-up shots, like really hugging people in the frame um, that is very uncomfortable. It's hard. It's it's like, back up, dude. Like, give this some space. Like, it's good to kind of give space to the characters, give a space so that uh, the audience can really look at the setting because where they were shooting, you know, their locations looked good. They looked appropriate for what they were going for. So, you know, just bring it back a bunch. But like I said, that did get better as the film went on. Um, no consistency accent. I already talked about that. Um, there's more dialogue in this than there really needs to be. And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with my comment about cutting it down for runtime because it drags a lot. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of dragging in this. Um, there's a lot of reputation in what gets, or I'm sorry, repetition. Uh, had an autocorrect. Repetition in what gets talked about, like I was saying. And when that happens, you really get bored as an audience member when you just keep hearing the same thing talked about again and again and again. And it's not really progressing the story. It's not going anywhere. The other thing is when you finally do talk about that thing again or have the characters talk about that thing again and there is something new added the audience may have kind of checked out already on that so it, you need to be more selective with the dialogue that you're that you're using just saying there is a nice creepy visual surprise uh in this and i'll tell you i'll give you an idea of when it is in the film um, so you'll know when it happens that this is what I was referring to, but it doesn't spoil anything. There's a sh camera shot where it pans upward inside of a building to look at the ceiling. So now you'll know what I'm talking about. Very good shot. Looked really creepy. Really nice. Really enjoyed that. Uh, there's some, there's quite some solid fun that gets injected into the film around the 50 minute mark. So... I wasn't having that much fun until about the 50 minute mark. It does get much better after that, in my opinion, because that's when kind of the Western ends and the horror begins. So uh, it's much better, but still, you know. The camera work settled down, like I said, and there were actually some really good visuals at that point. A lot of them driven by practical effects. The practical effects were handled pretty well in this, I will say. That that aspect of it was pretty good. I was impressed with that. Um, like I said again, I do have I reiterate, I do have to give credit for attempting this, but unfortunately I just have to call it an attempt. I don't think it was very successful. The story is not very compelling past the overall idea of the film. That's one of those issues I was talking about with the script. It just needed more time. It needed more depth to it, the characters as well. Good idea, good concept. It just wasn't really developed a whole lot, unfortunately. In order to really sell it, like I said, you needed the cast to really, really sell it with their performances, and that didn't really happen either. A few of the characters actually I felt were um, miscast as well. Uh, I'm not gonna you know name names or anything like that because there were a few actors and actresses who did handle their roles pretty well, and I, and I was like, oh, that's a that's a solid performance. But overall, eh, to not so good. The runtime again, the runtime, the runtime, the runtime for what it was and how much it it, it dragged. And another thing that I definitely, definitely want to say again, even though I already said it, Alex Cuervo. That soundtrack is amazing. So good. I loved it. I loved it. It's my favorite thing about this movie. I could probably just put the movie on again and only listen to the music. Uh, the last thing I want to I want to stop with here is um, I have a feeling that one of the influences for this film was From Dust Till Dawn by Quentin Tarantino. I'm, it's just a 
just a hunch I have based off a feeling I got from watching the film. But anyway, obviously I wasn't a big fan of this one, but I have said this many, many, many times in my reviews. This is my personal opinion. This is how I personally feel about these films. So I still encourage people to go ahead and watch the movies to make up your own mind. There have been plenty of times that I have had good reviews of a film and people come back and comment on that review and say, you know, I hated that or I didn't really dig on it. Or I've had bad reviews on films like this one and people have watched it come back and said, you know what, I love that actually. And that's good. That's great because this is just my personal opinion and no matter what film I'm reviewing, there are going to be people who hate it, people who love it, and people in the middle. And that's what's important. So the other thing I always say is every film is worth watching at least once just to make up your own mind. So do that, I would say. But for me personally, I don't really recommend this film. I didn't like it, um, which was sad because I really wanted to. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm giving it one and a half stars. Sorry, Aaron, if you see this. Like I said, I bought Scare Package, man. I bought it. Might even watch it again soon just because I feel bad about this. But anyway... I'm going to be honest about these things. So anyway, uh, when people do see the film, if people do watch the film, we can talk down spoilers in the comments. We can do that. Um, let's talk it out. Did you really like it? Did you not like it like me? Were you in the middle? Let's talk. Anyway, uh, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button if you can for me. If you like any review I've ever done, any video I've ever done, that's your best way to repay me for doing that because I don't make money or anything. I'm just doing this for the horror community to... Well, I mean, build a horror community with this channel. So I would appreciate that. Also, hit that notification bell if you're going to do that. Because that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new reviews or unboxing videos or doing live streams or any of that stuff. But regardless, I do appreciate you taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.